Welcome to Ascent. Today we have a message concerning the divine masculine energies. It does uh, appear that there's something going on. We're using the under the big top deck here primarily as I do feel that there is, <laughs> you know, that energy of not my circus, not my monkeys getting that really strong here today. We're also going to use uh, one of the divine masculine decks I was led to create and this, what is this journey of love? Um, to get a channeling a little bit later in the message. But for now, we're going to focus here. So let's go ahead and get started. Don't forget to share your energy. Are you a divine feminine or a divine masculine? Your sun sign and your location, your country. Where are you? What are you doing? I am a divine feminine. I'm a cancer and I am here in the United States. I'm in Florida more specifically. What are you doing? Where are you at? What time is it? But most of all, share in the chat and let us know what you've got going on. Let's start here. So we start off immediately with swords, two of swords, seven of swords. Look at this. It's almost like this person is watching this person and this person is trying to get to this person. It's funny because typically when we see the seven of swords, we think about someone who is in a space. Well, we've actually been seeing this a lot lately and it's been coming up as envy and deception, but it also, we think about someone who's undercover, someone who is in a place they're not supposed to be. So if you think about it here, this person is not really a circus performer, but maybe it's a, an evil circus or something, right? And they're trying to figure out what's really going on. I do wonder though, why the Two of Swords is present. The, this energy of the watching, mm, because the energy that I'm feeling for this particular reading is, is a bit... It's a bit low vibe. I'll just tell you that. All right. It's a little low vibe here. So look at this again. We've got another sword, but this is good to see because the Knight of Swords, that's who this is said to be. And you've heard me if you've been around the channel long enough, make sure you subscribe so you can kind of get more of this information. If you've been around the channel long enough, you know that this person right here is this person right here. Okay. The Knight of Swords is the most highly skilled. They are the fastest. They are um, they're also in the low vibe though. They go too fast. Okay. And their opinions are not necessarily ones that they should hold. Okay. So it really depends on what, what energy comes through here so far. Hey, yay, yay. I'm wondering if there's a little bit of, you know what? And if you look, look, you see the, the different looks. This is, this is definitely undercover in disguise. <sighs> I wonder if this means, I've been in situations like this before, and maybe you have too, maybe you can share something like this, where you've walked into a place and they didn't know you were X, Y, Z. I know I will, I will talk about it and say like mixed people experience it a lot, right? Or maybe, maybe you've got mixed family, okay? And someone says something about something, maybe your granddaughter or your little cousin is mixed with not knowing that you have that connection and you care about that. And they just let it all fly. And you're like, wow, I get the sense that this person is in a situation where they don't know, the, the people around them do not know that they are not supposed to be there, that they are sneaking around. The question is, is this talking about you? Or is this talking about where your counterpart is? I'm, I'm thinking this is current energy. So for a lot of you, this is definitely going to be some sort of separation, meaning we're talking about the people that they have been around and what I'm trying to figure out is, does is the divine counterpart starting to feel like they have to walk away and or maybe even run away, get away as fast as they can from the situation that they're in because they're starting to have like this imposter syndrome feeling. Um, they're starting to question who they really are, maybe like losing their sanity a little bit in it do where do I really belong? I don't feel right here, but this is all I know. There, it, there could be a sense of urgency to get away, but this could also be this sense of the divine counterpart trying to appear as if they belong, right? Being so hard-headed or desperate or anything in between that they force themselves into situations um, and and keep themselves places that they shouldn't be, and it just keeps. It literally is forcing them to morph into another person to survive. So there's a lot of energy coming through here. This is really interesting to see. And last one, the hermit. Hmm. It's weird because I remember this from when we first used this deck and the energy, the, the, the image I'm seeing has changed, okay? 
the energy that I, when I first saw this was a bit different, but today I see this as remember the, the person we saw in the very beginning, um, looking over the girl in the two of swords. I wonder if this is representative of the divine feminine collective and what if that large kind of looming presence was as well. Then that would give me so <laughs> that would give me the sense that the person we saw in that two of swords maybe was not there to represent you. It might have been there to represent a karmic energy, you know, a third party situation, someone who's been lying to them. And that's tough because they're being lied to in their deception. So what can they really trust? Because they so, ooh, certainly can't trust themselves. Well, let's look at that. Huh. Okay. Knight of Wands wanted to be seen here, but it's Nine of Pentacles that's up top. Again, the energy has shifted so much. I remember I kind of liked this card when I saw it, but right now I'm looking at it and I, I got to tell you, I've never noticed this until now. I've played with this deck a few times, right? But do you see that? Do you see? Can, is that, is it too blurry? Because yo, that's, that's a person under her feet. And that's, oh man. They're being lied to and deceived by someone who appears to be abundant, but they just saw something that they weren't supposed to see. What, what? Whoa. They saw the real abundance. This is not a real person. This is a, this is like a puppet or something. This, this is, <laughs> this is three people in a, a trench coat. Okay. I, that my, I, I don't know why, but I see it. This is someone who is creating an illusion of abundance, okay? Creating the illusion of queendom, if you will, right? The illusion of, um, I just heard delusions of grandeur, but no, no. <laughs> the, the, this illusion of uh, power and greatness and even leadership. But your divine masculine, they found the real key the real abundance they've also found the crown almost like they forgot almost like this is what they were looking for all along they forgot who they were and when they found this and this everything clicked and amnesia wiped but okay all right this is this is intriguing me let's find out what we need to know here that was fast okay we're gonna keep these because seven of swords just came back up while i was in the midst of searching and I wonder what were you searching for? It's almost like right when you found the truth, remember that two of swords person came flying in, keeping you from the light, keeping you from the truth. Wow. Oh my gosh. Look, at, okay, so here, this is weird. You see the scales up here, right? Okay, so this almost gives a vibe of justice, almost like Lady Liberty, Lady Justice, okay? Shining the light on this tiny little person begging for help. So this is very interesting. But look at what came out. It's the actual Justice card. And it's, I mean, it's, <laughs> isn't this weird? Okay, so we're definitely on the right track here. Where this is strange to me is this is the transformation that has to occur. And I'm thinking, remember I said not my circus, not my monkeys in the beginning of this, kind of like jokingly? Well, I'm looking at this and it's like, I think that may be why so many divine feminine counterparts on their journey feel so disconnected during separation, whereas the divine masculines don't even really know about separation. They don't realize that's what's happening. Um, they might not even know their twin flames. And you know what I mean? So it's kind of different for them. But the divine feminine collective is like, yeah, listen, all that crap you've got going on, sneaking around in the darkness. And I don't even live like that anymore. I am, I am such a being of light. I can't sneak around, right? I just have to do what I have to do and do the right thing and be the right person. And I feel almost like this is the true queen. And what's interesting is it's the six of pentacles who shows up and it's like, hey, the true queen has real gifts. They don't have to, you know, be operated by three people in a trench coat. They're a real person, real gift, meaning that you can really be healed from um, being small. This is this is really strange what I'm seeing because it's, it's this very 
it's like it's like painting this visual, this dramatic visual. Okay, so how many of you resonate with that? That sense of the divine masculine either being in like a dark night of the soul space, or at the very least, being in a place where their life could very well be likened to a circus. You are this being that kind of stands outside and you know what's going on over there and you kind of tell people, you know, don't go into the shadows over there in the, where the circus is because you know what they got going on over there. They went into the circus because they heard there was some magical being there that could help them. And that person, that being told them, hey, I can make you big. I can make you bigger. So they went and they worked for this person, but all they ended up doing was just like slaving for this person. And I got to tell you something, that is actually how a lot of like human trafficking and a lot of even just like modern day slavery and indentured servitude starts. There are slaves all around the world right now. And it's not all human trafficking style where there are people who say, hey, I'll help you get out of debt with your family or whatever. And they go in and they think it's going to happen and they end up just full on being stuck. That's a lot, how a lot of people get stuck in, um, what are those places called? Like sweatshops. They think it's going to be a good job and then they're stuck. And then some people even get kidnapped into that stuff, right? Where they're trafficked that way, where they go work somewhere away from their friends and family, where they're stuck in that building. They eat there, they sleep there. This is the vibration that I'm getting. That it's like your person has been trapped inside of some sort of space where the illusion, right? Like think about the circus. Think about what you know about the circus as an adult versus what you might've thought about it as a child. And I'm not just talking about like some of the bad stuff that might happen at circuses, like any of the abuse and the weird things that might, you know, I'm talking just more so about as a child, like the wonder of, wow, look at that. And then as an adult, it's like, oh, you know, it's all we might find the wonder of it because we see it once when it comes to our city, but this is just a traveling show. And what's really going on the day to day, the real life of these people, you know, is not as glamorous as it looks. And we kind of understand it's actually a really hard life. And, and, and there's a lot of bad stuff that goes along with it. Your divine counterpart didn't see it that way. They still saw it from a very childlike space of, wow, look at all the possibilities. Look at all the, the potentials of what I could do, what I could be a part of, what I could uh, receive by joining this, not knowing that it's not glamorous and that you're really never going to get what's promised to you. And by the time you realize that it's so far gone, you're stuck there forever. So this is interesting because what we have is someone who has been a part of the circus for a long time now. I got to ask you guys, what is that metaphor to you? What is the circus to you? What circus is your divine counterpart a part of? I think for my divine masculine, the the circus he was a part of was just kind of like uh, immature masculinity, if that makes any sense. Just kind of the usual for American guys. You know, um, all I do is work so that I can, you know, hang out with the boys kind of, right? Like that, that's, that was probably the worst that he really had going on, but it was still a circus nonetheless. Um, remember yesterday or a couple days ago when my phone went out because my friend called me because I couldn't find, like couldn't figure out where he was and he kind of lives a, a little bit of a risky life. And so when I asked a mutual friend of ours, is he okay? He said, no, he's gone. He made me think he was, he was, he was dead because he finally committed to a woman. Remember, I just told you that story a couple days ago. That's that kind of immature, youthful, oh, we lost a good one to the marriage game, kind of like, what are you even talking about kind of thing that your DM could be a part of? Maybe it is outright, full on, they got with some man or some woman out there who maybe they got a lot of kids and they just kind of have become a parent and they don't even have kids, right? Um, or maybe they got a lot of drama and crazy family stuff going on and it's it's just like, oh, they their family keeps us apart. Like there's a circus-like energy. And I think that before you even get any messages out of this, you need to look at your divine counterpart as the innocent in the circus in order to get this message. Because if you look at them as the ringleader of the circus, well, then you've got to ask yourself, are they really your divine counterpart? Because to get to a point where they could become that manipulative and, and all that, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and be leading this huge negative karmic energy they're so deep in that I'm just trying to figure out what would ha have to happen for them other than some horrifying tower 
to get them back. But for the most part, most of you admit like, no, they're not the ringleader. It's some parent, some sibling, some girlfriend or wife or husband, whatever, right? It's somebody in their life that's really the ringleader. And there's a bunch of, you know, the flying monkeys all around. There's, there's all the people of that circus. And my divine counterpart was foolish enough to get associated with it. That's really what's happening. Knowing that, what is it that they need to see? What is the reality of the circus that they're a part of? Because that's going to help you understand a lot of what it is that they're seeing. Because I think that we're going to be looking at this from the perspective of someone who really doesn't understand. They're, they have not yet found you, the person who actually has the power to shine a light upon them with the magic. Look at the magic and make them big. This is interesting because it's basically someone posing. It's like the Wizard of Oz, right? Posing as someone who can change things when it's really Glinda the Good Witch, isn't that her name? That that will be the one who has the power. So I don't know why, but this keeps opening up. Mm, Page of Wands. And you know what? It's, it, he puts on this spirit, this spirit of confidence, this spirit of, you know, um, I know what I'm doing and I know what's going on in the world around me and I understand everything and I'm on top of it all, right? They put on this, this facade, but the truth is, it's not real, but I will say this, what divine has done is provide that facade so they could fake it till they make it only for them to realize that the harder they try to fake it and pretend all these things, the more they realize the environment that they are in doesn't even match it either. And so it's actually helping them by forcing them to pretend it's creating enough discomfort in them for them. And also enough bravado, like, fake confidence for them to believe in themselves enough to say, I'm smart enough to think through this. I'm smart enough to figure this out and really get to the bottom of things. So in the beginning, it's definitely bad because you, I think you probably experienced points where your divine masculine was just not themselves. But enough of doing that and enough of kind of pretending to be someone they weren't, which was at, the only good thing was that person was at least more confident than their true self has blessed them with the ability to see even before they found the sword of truth. And I think that the reason why they were so interested in all these other swords was because every time they passed by this sword, they really couldn't see it for what it was. Now, now that they have the intelligence and they believe in themselves and they can really see what's going on, now they notice it. And I'm wondering if, oh, wow found it. I was wondering what the thing they saw was. Remember we saw the two of swords over here and she was kind of flying in and I was like, huh, this is weird. Well, the two of swords represents what? Uh, the energy of, of, you know, maybe we're closing our eyes to the truth. We know something's wrong and we're going to ignore it. Or maybe we don't know what's wrong, but we can sense it and we, and we just don't want to believe it. Um, it is this kind of blindness energy, right? And I think that since we've also seen justice or justice here and kind of the image of justice here, there's almost this sense of the person coming to swoop in and say, hey, 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 with some kind of blind justice angle to try to get them not to look at the sword, to try to swoop in and cover it up. And you ever seen somebody? Oh my gosh. I remember there's a comedian, I think it was Kevin Hart who said that, you know, he like dropped some money when he was young and his dad was an, an addict. And so when he dropped it, his dad like put his foot down over it and didn't move it and just kind of stood there. Kind of like, you know, this is mine's now, uh, my germs. And uh, no one notices it, right? Okay, now it's, I'm gonna steal it, you know? And so, <laughs> so it's almost like, I feel like this person's trying to swoop in right before they get to it and put their foot over it. But here's the thing, what did I just say? Kevin Hart or whoever the comedian was, saw that happen. And that was a turning point moment for them where they realized my dad is not okay. And I feel like they finally realized that because they've been looking, they've got a lot of swords here. They've been looking for swords. They've got them all packed in and everything. I didn't even realize, look, 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 look how many they have. They've been looking for the truth the whole time in here, but they could not find it. And finally, we see there it is. Look, this one is actually activated. It's on. Look at the magic surrounding it, right? They come in, they want to go pick it up. And the person, whatever situation they're in, tries to come flying in and cover up the sword. And your divine masculine just saw it. 
that's why they will be in, they will end up here. That's why, because they just watched somebody try to cover up the very truth that they were, they knew, right? The, the bad person, place or thing knew your divine counterpart was searching for that truth. So that's one side. And then the other side was, why are you covering up the truth at all? You knew I was desperate to find the, the truth and you knew where it was and you didn't tell me. And now I'm seeing that you're covering it like you're trying to keep me from it. And you promised me that you were going to help me find it. Do you know how many levels of fucked up that is? So this is kind of interesting. Whoo, this is interesting. So I'm going to lay these down like this. So we see now we get the, the justice, right? Oh, now we get the justice. But maybe let's grab a couple things. Well, you're standing out. Let's just see what we, you're standing out. Whoop. Well, maybe, okay. All right. Okay. Let's start here. So first things first, what did they see? So we see, we already knew this was justice. They saw, uh, huh. You see the white, the white dog, like the full card. They saw what they were looking for in the very beginning. They saw the thing they set out to find from the start. Now here's the question. Do you know what your divine counterpart was looking for? Some of you know that they, I mean, you can even see the pentacles imagery here, even though this is a major arcana card. So some of you kind of know that to them, justice equals them finally having whatever materialistic things they want, okay? But I think that this is also about a truth that goes along with that. And so it's like they were searching for the truth about maybe themselves or maybe, maybe, I don't think it was about love and relationships. I really feel like this was something more about how they were going to get where they needed to get to. And the irony is that, bruh, it was love and relationships. That's how you're going to do it. With the support and love, that's, that is what a lot of people don't realize, um, was was available to those that they say wow how did you do it how did you make it well I for some people it's I had nobody right but for many people it's actually even if I didn't have a lot I had at least maybe one or two or three right maybe a few good friends or a good partner by my side who never gave up on me did they actually do the work I did no but they never gave up on me obviously the feeling of not being given up on right like the, the, the love that someone could pour into you just because of be you being you is more valuable than they know. But they, they went into this situation trying to figure that out or figure out maybe what truth there is, not realizing, hello, it's, it's what's been in front of you all along. It's what you've been missing all along. You know what? Let me open this. I think this, does this do, oh, it doesn't do, hold on. Let me just see. Mm, the hermit, how blessed are you to have light in the dark? Again, I'm telling you divine feminine. And how do we know who wins the game? Oh my, my, my. This is the question. That is such an answer, right? Or the answer you would get to this question is such a good thing that you, for someone who's trying to win at life. Well, how do I know who's really the winner at life? And again, it's the people who, when they die, have the, you know, all the love surrounding them, right? Like it's the people who leave a legacy for the next generation. These are things that they don't really think means winning. But it's because they were in an immature masculine state at that point. And what's f***ed up, what I think they're upset about here is that when they entered the circus, when they first paid the toll and said, yes, I want to go down this path, they were promised that. They were promised that this is the game that they should be playing and how they should be playing it. I gotta tell you, for some of you, this is going to be like a job. This is a, a, a one manager told them in the beginning that they can make a lot of money or a manager told them that there was room for advancement or something. For some of them, this isn't even a person. This is, this is some part of their life where they were outright lied to. I know a lot of millennials out there feel like they were lied to. We graduated 
and the economy crashed. And it's been, you know, hard for us ever since. Everybody, all the old people did better. Everybody else got their money back. We didn't. So it's really interesting to look at that and think, huh, imagine being promised your whole life. If you just go to college, if you just do this, and then some unforeseen circumstance happens and everyone's like, come on, pull yourself up by your bootstraps, figure it out. And it's like, wait a minute, <laughs> you lost your 401k. I never had anything to start. And you start to see this, this anger build up against the system that they were a part of. So you have to ask yourself again, what is it? that they went in thinking they were going to receive justice. They were lied to and told, this is the right way. You know, put your put all your eggs into this basket and this is everything you need. And when it crashed and burned over and over and over again, they couldn't help but wonder, wait a minute, why did I start this? Where Where is my promise? What's going on? And that is what led them to search. That is what led them to realize Something's going on here. Something's wrong here. You can think there's all kinds of movies and TV shows that start that way, where someone goes into a situation kind of just like, yeah, I'm just trying to escape. I'm just trying to go hang out, do my thing. And then it, it's like it's like the superhero who goes on the run and then ends up in a place where it's like divine timing, obviously. They were supposed to go save everybody, you know? And it's like, dang it. <laughs> I feel like the divine counterpart tried to pretend that they were just like a low life. You know, again, not the circus equals low life, but again, thinking about like just the lowest vibration, they just tried to pretend that they belonged in the slums only for them to again, be kind of tapped on the shoulder by divine and say, Hey, got a job for you. <laughs> I need you to shine your light over here. So this is, woo, this is a lot. Ooh, wow. 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 Listen to this. Listen to this. Instead, it will create a vortex of energy that will require you to keep being a player in a game that will never end and one in which no one ever walks away truly victorious. Y'all, they, they've, been, they've been tricked. They've been trapped. They've been lied to. Oh, thank you so much to the 119 of you, 119, that have liked this video out of the 171 of you that are here. I really, really appreciate you guys the most. I didn't even have to ask you to like this video. You guys are super mega dope. So, okay, Divine Masculine saw someone they thought they could trust not only lie to them, but prove that this whole time it's all been a trick. How did that make them feel? Like, what have I been really doing? Why am I even making an effort here? And what, what am I trying to achieve because... All the effort I've been putting in and not getting anything out of it, I have to wonder where does all the money go? Where does all the effort go? That Remember how I said it's almost like someone walking into a situation and realizing like they're just trying to chill, but it, or even starting, it's like starting a new job at the circus. No, but starting a new job and thinking everything's cool and then realizing they're actually a shady like scam company. Slowly but surely you start to figure it out. It's depressing, it's demoralizing, it, especially if you threw all your eggs in that basket and all that. And it makes you wonder, why did I try at all? What was I really doing? Who was I really helping? And again, where did the money go? Because if that's all I really care about, I got questions. What is it that we need to understand? They were in this circus for a reason, you know what I mean? Like, so what do we need to know has, is actually going to be the benefit? Because what did I say? When that we saw that page of wands energy, it said, yes, I started off pretending like, you, you know, when you go in for your first day of work and you're like, I'm here, I'm confident, I know I can do this. And then like, let's say you've been there for a year and you realize that, you know, every metric they set is basically impossible. Most people don't even last more than three months. You know, it's one of those call centers where it's just like, sell, sell, sell. And you're exhausted and you're like, bro. It's not that I'm not confident in myself. I know that what you're asking me to do is impossible. Nobody wants these damn timeshares, Steve. You know, and, and there's this sense here where the divine counterpart is thinking, okay, in the beginning, I came in feeling good that I could do this. Now that it's been a year, I've seen the truth and I just like, not, I'm sorry, I've experienced the truth, right? The reality. And now I've actually seen the truth and that you've been lying to me this whole time. Now here's the positive, right? Here's 
the only way for me to have figured this out was for me to have this horrible experience, but now there's this beautiful good thing that comes out of it. What is it? Seven of Pentacles. Hold on. It's, wow. Okay, look at this. Look at the, now, if you just got here, you might m misunderstand a little bit, but if you have been here, you're gonna say, whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at the little guys. You see them? What are they doing? They're fighting each other, trying to get the pentacle, okay? But look who's up here with all the pentacles, with all the wisdom, with all the knowledge, with all the understanding in the moon, right? In the darkness, in the shadows. They now know that there is a master puppeteer. They now know that there is somebody fucking with them, tricking them, teasing them. And you know, I gotta tell you something. You know what this looks like? It makes me think about a pyramid scheme almost, right? Like an MLM or something where it's like you throw your money in and then they dangle your own damn money over your head. That's his coin. Look at that. That's his coin he's fighting other people for. They already spent these three guys' coins. That's why they're so tired. He, he just got here more recently, so he actually has the energy to try to reach for it, not knowing that's his own coin. So this is, this is um, wow. This is kind of a message saying... You need to start to pour into yourself, divine masculine, right? Like you need to start to treat yourself better. You need to start to see that you have what it takes and believe in that. Because if you don't, you're going to keep trusting other people who they're not even doing anything. They just hoard coins and good people. They're, they're not even they're. This is, this is like the third or fourth time we've seen some sort of image where these people are being oppressed, you guys. Your divine, and, and again, I don't know if you notice all these like smokestacks and, and like how, like towers. And this is one plus six is seven. This is the tower moment, but also the blessing. The tower moment is realizing that they had just wasted all their time. And I gotta tell you something. Maybe if you guys are willing to do this, raise your hand in the, in the chat if you've been there at any point on your journey where you realized, yes, I did waste my time with X, Y, Z, blank, ABC, whatever. Yes, I did. And it felt like crap. I'll raise my hand there. I, there are several things that I know throughout, especially in the early part of my journey that I got embarrassed by. Okay, bad. But I'll say this. Each of those things showed me something important. In this case, this person just realized what? That there's a ringleader that there's someone doing all this. So not only does it mean that, hey, you're not stupid because it'd be one thing if like you did this to yourself, right? But it's another thing that you got duped, you got tricked. So you just learned that there are scammers and cons and all that stuff out there, right? You learned that there are people out there in every part of your life, in every part of the world who are gonna find an angle. That's an important lesson. That takes away naivety. But you also learned that if you had just invested the little humble pentacle that you had all along that you would be so much farther along by now because if this is what a person can do when they put in a little bit of effort to be evil imagine what you can put in to be good so i will say this yes i've had a couple moments on my journey where i gotta raise my hand and say man i've been here I've been toyed with, I've been played with, I have wasted my time. But when I took a step back and realized like, wait a minute, if that means, <gasps> and all of a sudden I'm on it, I'm ready. And it shifts from I've wasted time to the time is now because I get it now. I get, I see it, it's obvious in front of me. So I really like what I'm seeing here because it says, I did enter a situation and you can even see the sun right here, right? This was the beginning. I entered the situation. I was fresh. I was new. I was trying to figure out what was going on. But by the end, I saw the truth. I realized what was really happening and I'm wiser for it. And I think that's one of the things that a lot of us as divine feminines can be afraid of when we are on the journey, we're learning the stuff, we're doing our work. And we wonder by the time we get together, are they still gonna be the same old kind of like maybe foolish person or make some kind of stupid decision sometimes? And it's like, no, they're learning in their own way in the ways that only you know divine knew only they could learn. One more thing I wanna point out to you, if you remember in the beginning 
Uh, actually, isn't it right here? No, it's not. No, no. But again, the, I will say that the single pentacle kind of keeps coming up, which is really cool because I made I I put these on sale on my website and I I put I brought them out to show it to you, but now I actually am sitting here showing you like the single pentacle um <laughs> that I have out in the reading today. It's really weird. But so we have the single pentacle, the the single pentacle being dangled. Where'd it go? Sorry, I have motion sickness. Dangled, right? And it's like, huh, let me think, let me think. What did we see in the beginning? We saw the king of pentacles. We saw the nine of pentacles, but we also saw the king of pentacles. The nine of pentacles, there was something that seemed off about it. Why would the nine of pentacles queen, who is so beautiful and wonderful, the queen of pentacles that we're used to seeing is like, she's love, bro. Like she would never let someone be a footstool for her. You know what I'm saying? Like what? That's weird. And so when you look at it and you realize, whoa, 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 that's not it. No wonder my counterpart doesn't like relationships or doesn't like men or women or whatever, right? Because they think that feminine energy looks like that. Three freaking mice in a trench coat pretending to be a woman, you know? And so it's really interesting because it says, when they found the pentacle, they found their crown. We already saw that in the very beginning of the reading. And now we're seeing that that pentacle was theirs. Here's a little bit of a message for you. That means that this pentacle that they threw in when they paid the toll, the same one that the circus has been using to toy with people and play with people, the divine masculine funded this ride. The next message for this person is what? Hey, you get in what you get. Seven of pentacles. Think about that. You reap what you sow. Again, the messages that they're getting when they're realizing what's really happening in their life, it's more profound than it might be for us because for us, all we really usually want their messages to be is like, you know, you have a divine feminine, <laughs> you are divine masculine and it's time for you to be together, right? That something along there is what we really want them to connect with. But we have to remember our counterparts are not meant to just be, you know, one thing. They're meant to be all these things, everything they were ever meant to be in, in, in a fulfilling way. And we have to accept that there are other parts of their life that they're going to kind of go through their own growth, their own understanding. And, and because they are leaning more towards masculine energy, that means that some of their lessons are going to be lessons that we don't need to learn or we've only learned on a smaller scale, meaning we don't have to have the large scale experiences that they do to get it. Just like they don't have to have the large scale experiences that we have to have because they're in their mostly masculine energy and we're getting mostly those feminine things. I will tell you this, divine feminine Man is not meant to be alone is like a thing we understand, right? But women really don't, we don't want to be alone. Like we're more likely to hang out even as friends, right? And, and click up together and, you know, and chatty Cathy's and think of just about the tropes that we talk about with women. Women are the ones who typically kind of keep the village together. They're the glue, right? We really don't like to be alone. Feminine energies love that social, that that's just a part of what we do in that in that space, right? Because that's how we can connect with the people around us to understand their needs. So it is a part of our femininity. That's why I believe many of us go through such a tough, long, extended, lonely separation phase because we are more likely to need to learn the lesson of keeping people at a distance. Some of you may be experiencing divine masculines who are in a circus, but at least they're not alone. That's like your thought right now, right? Like, well, they've got a girl in that circus. They got, maybe they got multiple people in their circus, you know? And it's like, listen, they're alone here because they don't belong. They're the odd man out. They, they, everyone around them knows they don't belong and everyone around them is either trying to make them leave or get them to change into someone who does. So this is a lonely place for them too. Don't get it twisted. They needed to learn their lessons here just like you have been learning your lesson about how to cope with the loneliness of being a high level leader on this plane. So woo, there is a lot going on. There is so much happening. Okay, all right, so. Now, what do we need to know? Whoa. <laughs> well, <clears throat> remember when I said 
they're so small and da 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 and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, and she sends in the energy to help him grow. Remember that? Yeah, I get it. I see there's a couple people in the, in the chat saying, maybe it's this, maybe it's that. Nope, I'm, I'm accurate as usual. Remember I said she's going to help him get bigger? She's actually going to help him grow and not trick him and not lie to him? Well, would you look at that? Look at the light and look at that. Look at the tiny person. Look at the big man next to him. Again, I've played with this deck two or three times. I do not know these images well enough to know shrinking and growing and all this stuff. And I don't even think that's what this is supposed to represent, to be real with you. But it is a part of our story and it's playing out this reason or this way for a reason. So interesting that we go from 11 to 4, right? 11, 11. And you even have this space that says the divine counterpart goes in, small guy, it, it shows you, he pays the toll and he believes that these dark magicians and whatever are actually going to help him, but they don't. But the moment they turn, the moment they listen to the lesson they learned, which is what? Divine partnerships. That's what you've been missing. The real player in the real game is in this game of of love because the game of love is always going up. We call it the game of love like um like movies and stuff directors have writers have taken that and made it into a negative thing. But the reality is the game of love is this beautiful spiraling upness, right? <laughs> like it's incredible. And I don't know why, but I get the sense of the moment they recognized that the truth is when you shine a light, you don't dangle the pentacle in the light and say, come and get it. When you shine the light, the light itself is magical enough to create that growth. There is something about this new understanding that they have that has given them truth. I really appreciate this. I, I think that it says, if I seek the truth in a space where no one's trying to stop me, I will find it. And I think that's a huge lesson. Now that might be like, well, I don't know. No, seriously, that's a huge thing for them to hear. Again, a lot of you have a different level and different areas of confidence than your person. And sometimes it can feel kind of like, and I, I've heard people say it, it's, we, it's toned down a lot in our tribe. Like I think either they've grown because they're here or they, they just know they're not really welcome in the high vibrational space unless they're high vibe, right? Like you can't be walking around bringing us down like that, bro. And it's like, I've seen people, you know, watch a love letter and be like, stop crying and man up. And it's like, bro, this is a love letter. Not even because it's like, oh, you're watching a tarot love letter. I'm thinking, think about what it would take for a masculine energy to sit down and let their feelings out. And, and to even tap into that, how overwhelming it probably is for them. And you're talking about man up. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, man, for them to realize that there is a way to seek truth and that the truth is actually out there, that they usually are missing one of the components, right? It's like everything that they know about what is right and what is good is tainted by some false something in there. And here they see it almost immediately, almost instantaneously, there is this massive growth. And I feel like this might be saying this has happened. <laughs> I, I, I'm pretty sure this is telling us this just occurred. So, okay. Oh, snap. Pause, 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 pause. Did you see that? Can you see this? So that's okay. I, I put this down actually as a reminder for myself because this is a free gift that goes inside of this box I have. There's um, someone out there. I, I know you're out there. I don't know who you are yet, but someone out there is trying to start a twin flame tarot channel and needs decks and needs like, they want a lot of it. They want to get started. And I've got a box of stuff. I have a tarot reader starter, starter pack. It's hard to say tarot reader starter pack. And I was going to put this in the starter pack and I've like, I keep forgetting. So I was like, I'm going to put this down right here to remind myself to say, whoever needs the tarot reader starter pack that I have on my website, get it. And the emperor shows up under 444. That's, that's boom. What? Come to here. Because what in the world is going on? Ooh, it opens to death, which is one plus three is four. Hold on, guys. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> oh my gosh. There is no doubt size can be intimidating and power can loom larger than life. Size and strength do not equate to leadership. Wow. Just because you took the part doesn't mean you want the role. Wow. Leadership is not a costume, it's a state of mind. Yours may not be in the right place at this moment, so let someone else direct your show until your head is back in the game. Interesting. Divine Masculine just gave us a little message there. They realize that if this is what they could leave themselves into, straight into a circus, this is what they could sit there and put themselves through for this entire time, knowing something was wrong, hiding the truth from themselves until the, the, the truth they could not ignore came out. I think that there's a message here that says, I'm sorry for just now realizing who I really am and just really being able to get here. I'm sorry that I just now figured out what makes a stable foundation. I'm sorry that I trusted something that was so obviously a scam. It's funny that I'm sitting here thinking about like joining the circus and then again, like MLMs or pyramid schemes or whatever. And it's like, damn, did one of your DMs actually do that? Like full on just join a pyramid <laughs> scheme? I don't know, but there's something about it that just feels so familiar, you know, oh, not familiar. What's the word? It just feels so real. Like it's happening right now. Like it's, oh, I can't explain it. So, okay. What is it that they want us to know? You're right. I was wrong. <laughs> you're right I was wrong you know what I think this is about about who you are and who they are you're you're right but let's see let's see what you're actually right about okay oh uh, four of cups <gasps> remember I said you were the face in the in the top thing and now here you are again you they can see you but I feel like they're being poisoned <laughs> So this is interesting because again, four, 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 four. Anybody? No? Oh, okay, cool. All right, cool. <laughs> like I just maybe it's just me again, you know? Um, again, four, 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 seven, seven. Like it, it's eleven. Seven plus four, seven plus four. Eleven, eleven, and eleven. <laughs> it's just, it's just, I'm just saying, it's all over, okay? And I really feel like looking at this, and I'm gonna say a couple things here. All right. <laughs> okay. First and foremost, the thing I got from this is the three cups spilled over versus this cup, right? And remember how I said in this image that the person was coming in and they were going to put their foot down over this so that, that they, when they looked, they couldn't see it and they saw them. I think they may have even seen some sort of, oh, and I don't even, I don't even really mm, go this direction, but it's like someone watched someone do witchcraft on them from around the corner. Like they, they peeked into the kitchen and saw her pour the, you know, what into the spaghetti sauce kind of thing. Don't do that. It's gross. Um, <laughs> right. It's like they, they realize that someone has been manipulating their emotions. Okay. This person is obviously the divine masculine. It has shown up in every single image, even down to Grace talking about growing and shrinking and making somebody big. It's obvious that this is the divine masculine this is their fool's journey that they're on and look at them they're sitting in the boat they're trying to move on maybe even trying to get away and someone sneaks in with some sneaky sneaky emotions and and riles things up or messes things up there's something strange going on here so i have to ask you where has maybe your divine masculine tried to accept the love, tried to contact you, tried to come in, and someone has actively stopped it? Again, whether it's family, friends, um, or a, a partner that they are, you know, with, has this actively happened to you? Because I'm just saying, I'm looking at this and it's like, this card looks beautiful like this. If you look at it from afar, it looks like flowers and it just looks like an uh, art piece. There's something about it. And I got to tell you too, oh my gosh. Do you see what I, can you see? Okay, how do, what angle should I give this to you so that you can see it? If you look at this from the right angle, it almost looks like this is the ceiling. I get it. You're like, Grace, it's upside down. No, 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 no. Look at even down to the angle. Like I know if Stefos here, do we have any artists in here? Look at the angles. This looks, and look at the, the way that these, this looks like some puffy trees, some pretty flowers or something. And then this is the walls. 
this is so strange because it's almost like they tried to fly away. They tried to take the high vibration, but someone came in. I'm telling you, I get the sense of someone actively trying to leave and then being drugged. Now, I do not believe that any of your divine counterparts have been drugged in the real world, but I do get the sense of, ooh, okay. Again, normally I don't want to talk about specific people, but I get the sense of like, I'm trying to leave and go to this person and then the, the you know, their karmic person like walks in naked and is like, let's do it, you know? And they're like, oh, damn, I guess I got to stay. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry to give you that image, but that it's like they keep trying to take the high road. And it's almost when you look at it that way, like your spirit, the strength of your love is drawing them home. But they can't. You're right. Whatever it is that you see, whatever it is you think is going on, you you may very well be right. Again, sometimes we take things too literally, you know, and we go too far with that. But I'm just looking at this and I'm thinking, no. You were aware that someone was trying to hurt them. And this person will pretty much do anything they can, even down to damn near flying to stop your person from getting away. But we already know that. And I think that the point is that now that they know it too. So if you've ever had a discussion with your counterpart and said, this person, place, thing, or situation is bad for you. It's destroying your life. I'm not telling you that because I want you to come to me instead. I, I don't, at this point, I love you so much. I just want you to be happy. I don't care what you do. Please just don't do that. They didn't believe you. Why? Because they were still, they'd already paid the toll. They were in the small space. They'd already made the decision. This is where, have you ever seen a, a, a dog make a choice that this is where I'm going to lay now and it won't get up? <laughs> okay. Like this is dog Travis. Okay. And dog Travis, he's decided he's home now and he's not, you can't pull him off the couch. There's something about this that feels like the divine masculine let all these other things outside of themselves dictate where they went even down to when they were being pulled away right and trying to come to you while they were still small so that maybe this could happen right okay you see him right there right that even then this really wasn't their own accord this was even this was your energy so it's like i think that that might be a part of it now is before if they had come around, before if they had come back or if they had said something like they noticed the karmic situation was bad, they were just kind of mulling it over, thinking about it. Maybe they were even regurgitating back to you what you had said, but they really didn't believe it. And that's why they kept doing what they were doing. But now they know full well, they, this is their choice. This is their decision. They want to get the out of here. And again, they, they saw someone do this. Notice how both times the, the, the awareness is, I see what is being dangled in front of me to try to get me to stay. Fake pentacles, or really it's my own stuff, right? Fake love, or really what I'm giving to them, they just keep pouring it back to me. Ooh, that's, that, was, that, was a, that was one right there. That was one right there. Okay. Whew. Again, to the... 224 of you that have liked this video, you guys are incredible. I have not had to ask at all. <laughs> to the 321 of you who are here, I hope that you're getting something good out of this message. And I'm so grateful to those of you who continue to support this free channel and all the free readings we put out for the collective. It's, it's incredible to have this. Thank you. All right. Ah. I want to look at this first. I don't know what I'm doing about what. Okay. So I get this here. I'm trying and I'm failing and I get now why. You're right. The way for me to grow was to stand in the light and get out of the darkness and something bad was happening. I can see it now. I've got proof. I saw it with my own eyes. And even if they try to lie to me, I still saw it with my own eyes. I will tell you here that your divine counterpart may have been being gaslighted throughout this whole situation. And it's really, really important for you to give them some grace there, especially if they have started to try to like gaslight you. Don't, don't give into it or anything. If, especially if you've seen it with your own eyes and you're fully aware, 
just be aware that they may not be a full on narcissist. They just may be wearing the shell or the costume of a narcissist, okay? When I met Mr. Lightwork, there were a couple of things that he said that I could have just written him off and been like, nah, he's narcissistic and walked away, especially with how people throw that around nowadays. But he is the person who gave me the, the term, like I coined the term wearing the shell of a narcissist when I saw that he was like a softy on the inside. Cause usually a narcissist pretends to be soft on the outside, right? Victim, da 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 da, but they're hard on the inside. They're rotten, right? It was vice versa. So just be aware of that. If you see them doing some things and behaving in a certain way, especially if it's new, it probably isn't going to be around very long. It's just them kind of having the, their armor on and the only armor they know that works is what has worked to keep them safe with the narcissist they may have been involved with. So this is, okay. So I don't know what I'm doing now because I saw what I saw and I feel like I'm stuck or trapped, but I also kind of feel like it's, it's time for me to walk away. And I don't know exactly how to do this. Why was I put into this situation in the first place? Is there something that I'm supposed to do here? Or do I just leave now? Do I just, do I just go? So, okay, this is very interesting. I don't know what I'm doing about you. I knew it. I knew it. It's funny because when I saw the emperor and then I saw this, and then we saw even the three of cups, you're right. And it was like, you're right about what? And I was going to tell you because if you remember when I opened the book, it opened to the Empress and I turned the page to the Emperor. And it's interesting that this shows up next to it. I don't know what I'm doing with you. I don't know how to be the partner that you think I'm supposed to be because I just realized that the, the way I thought to go forward, the way I thought, you know, taking the, the easy route, taking the, the scheming and plotting and, you know, multi-level marketing, scamming kind of stuff. Like the things that I tended to do were very, very foolish. And I really don't know when it comes down to like picking the right people to be around and who I can trust and how to gauge who's trustworthy. I don't really know how to do all that stuff. And it's because of the fact that I've neglected in, and really just looked at relationships as kind of like a, just a, like a, I don't know, just a part of life, but not really anything valuable. I don't know how to make them better. I don't know how to fix them when they're messed up. I don't know how to be anything other than what I've wanted to be my whole life. And now that I'm realizing that I have to be a bigger person, a better person, there is just a part of me that wonders, what is it that that means? Like, how do I do this? What's interesting is you see that they're, they're big, but when they're with you, so look at this, they grew, you grew them, right? You shined your light, you gave them the blessing, right? Okay. And you made them big. So we see, boom, there's the light. Okay. And when they're by themselves, and even when they're in the circus, they now kind of recognize, right? Like, okay, this is what was really supposed to happen. They're seeing all the lies, they're seeing everything. But when it comes to you, even though they're still big, they're not, they don't feel like the emperor. They feel like their small self. They feel like they're still chasing rabbits. Meaning what? Remember that the nine of pentacles that we saw was a lady that kind of looked a little bit like her, but not all the way. But she was sitting on that throne. She had her foot on the people and she had a rabbit in her hand. And what's interesting is the last time we saw this reading, we did see this Empress card and the Nine of Pentacles and the rabbits. We saw, I do remember, because I remember something about the rabbits. But again, the energy is so different in this reading. So even though we're seeing kind of a couple repeats, it's like, no, this is the opposite. This is like the Alice in Wonderland that makes up you, right? And I kind of get the sense even here that that's what these cups represent. One rabbit, two rabbit, three rabbit. I feel like they look at you and you are a, you are just a point of confusion for them because they've never ever experienced anything like what you guys are about to experience. And frankly, neither have you. You can disagree, but you would be silly. If you have not had a blissful unified relationship with this person, if it's always kind of been almost there or not even close, right? But some of you almost got there. You have no idea what it's like to be attached to someone who is 
so incredibly powerful and 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 gifted and beautiful and amazing and the you don't know what you're going to feel like if there's going to be self-consciousness if, if there's going to be apprehension you don't really know until you get there but the difference is you're not so afraid to test it or try it out because you've been big if you will you've been you know doing your thug dizzle for so long that it, you just kind of say, well, let's just try it. Let's just do it. You know? And for them, they're like, dude, I think I'm going to break something. I feel like I'm going to knock everything over. I, I really don't know what I'm doing here. And I just, I feel like such a fool when I'm with you because look at you. So, okay. I think that this could be something that's been an issue since the beginning and is even still a, a point of confusion for them now but I do feel like this is the shift. So what do we need to know about this? Ah, Eight of Pentacles. It's the work that they've done that allows them to see that even if they don't know what they're doing with you, and there is 11. Again, seven plus four, seven plus four, eight plus three, and 11. And then we've got their four, four, four. This reading is incredibly synchronistic. I will now ask you, please to get the likes up to 300. I just need 20 of you to please like it. So I'm intrigued. I'm going to read this because you can see up here, major, major, major arcana. And remember these cards came out in a stack of six and all I did was place them down like this. So we didn't know what was going to come out. And yet look at what this is. Major arcana. And then we have Minor, 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 and lots of pentacle energy, okay? Even in the imagery that we see. So let's read this. Let's read our eight of pentacles. How does this book set up? Is it all eights together? Yeah, it's weird, right? It's like eights. Okay, eight. Ah. Thank you. Okay. So we're going to read the low vibration of this first, okay? Wow. Not everyone is happy with their place in the machine. Some may even feel like they have the least important role in the world. However, this is not true and everyone has value. Every person who keeps the world turning is valuable. Oh, comparison, oh, comparison is the beast that will devour you and constantly measuring yourself against someone who plays a different role will only cause you suffering. Oh my gosh, you guys, this is crazy. And it's it's 11.56, one, one, five, six. Oh, oh, sorry, this is just, just this is crazy because that's exactly what's happening. This reading is so freaking synchronistic. Like beyond the, even the pictures, the whole story is woven together. This is incredible. Okay. Um, uh, we can all play the part that has been written for us and we honor it by playing it the best we possibly can. This is why the audience is here to see the performers, all of them, not just one. Wow. So that's the negative. That's the low vibe. The low vibe is, yes, they're just now getting the hang of being big. You know, they're, they're, they've been trying to get it through people who promised them they would. Now, here's a difference. You didn't promise them that they would be big, but you promised them that they would be great. And they did not want to be great. They wanted to be big. They only learned later that in order to be big, you must be great and you must have the love and support of someone on your side. So as they start to click everything together, they find themselves looking to you and thinking on all levels, you're just so much better than me, but you never lied. You never promised me something you know you couldn't fulfill or you knew you couldn't fulfill. You always promised me the truth. And now that I know the truth, that I am powerful, that I am important, that I am special, and that I have a role to play, I am willing to do the work, even if I will always struggle with comparing myself to you. All right, let's read the, po the, the positive, okay? Actually, you know what? Let me look at this. I, I think I wanna read the positive of the Empress instead. I don't know why. Okay. <laughs> this is funny. 
It says, not all empresses want to be bothered with huge life tasks. Some just want to lay down and eat cake. I mean, the lady is pregnant after all. The fool rushes around trying to herd her rabbits to no avail. There is no order or authority here. Just a fed up woman and a frazzled friend. And honestly, that is often how creation works. It shows up, creates massive change, and then leaves you to sort out the mess, which you will do eventually when you feel more aligned to the constantly multiplying abundance around you. However, maybe right now cake is the answer. Perhaps staying on the couch is your best plan of attack. Your life is your responsibility. And like all good empresses, you will sort it out when you are good and ready. That is an interesting message because it says they do the work while you rest because you're pregnant. Okay, again, not talking about physical pregnancy with what? You're probably pregnant with abundance, with more of it. You've already got the dang rabbits everywhere. You know how rabbits do, okay? And you are just ringing your magic bell. Look at your magic. Look at your magical bell. You're not ringing it for them. You're ringing it for magic. They think they got to do all this work because they still have things to learn, right? But they're willing to do it, which is what's most important. But you already know what's up. You already know that right now you've got something in you that is ready to be birthed. Ooh, wee! And you need to rest and relax and let them serve. Let them come in and do what needs to be done. Let them be who they're supposed to be because I feel like you did your job. And what I mean by that is I believe that your job was to just give them the light. Okay, you did it. You helped them and they grew. They got bigger. You did what you were supposed to do even though they went and poured all their energy into another situation. Don't worry. They will reap what they've sown and they already really have by the delays and the constant nonsense. Now it's time for you to rest your hands on your belly overwhelmed and think of all the things that are in the balance as your reunion approaches, okay? Because they don't know what they're doing, but let's just be honest. How many new expectant fathers do? And yet they all end up turning into wonderful dads, right? The ones who were meant to be, they do. Which means divine feminine, you have some sort of goal or purpose, something you've been doing, something you've been gestating right in your belly, you've, you've been growing it. And it is going to come very soon. Most likely right around the time where they show up, you're giving birth, like, right? Like they just barely made it to the, um, what's that called? To the hospital room, okay? But they're gonna get there. So your job right now is to nest, make your life beautiful. Everything I've basically been telling you guys. And I didn't realize it was ask, asking us to take our foot off the pedal, go home and just be. I think what this might be saying is divine feminine. If you've been dealing with just anxiety where there's not actually anything happening, nothing's changing and that's creating more anxiety. This could be saying, think of the baby. If you have a spiritual ins a baby inside you right now and you are feeling anxious and overwhelmed from all the stuff that your person has going on and don't get me wrong, you're in the right place to do it. Well, guess what? You're going to be dealing with a lot of the stuff that comes with that type of vibe, that type of energy. And now the baby has all that stress in it. Do you really want, it's all, it's like me writing one of my books and having all the stress and strain of my life going on around me, like in the story where you can kind of just tell like the vibe of it is crappy or something, you know, it's like, no man, give the baby everything you've got since right now, that's really all you should be focusing on and know that the work is being done, that even though they don't know what they're doing, they will do backflips and all kinds of wild stuff. And oh, 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 by the way, they have imposter syndrome right now. They think they still look like what they used to look like, but they're actually doing it like this. And you know this strong man can do all that stuff. So this is really dope. I'm gonna go ahead and pull a channeled message really quick from your counterpart. Um, actually, before I do that, don't forget, it is review week. If you're interested, you can leave me a review for my book anywhere. And for every single review you leave, you're going to get a free reading. More information can be found in the comment, uh, com sorry, the community tab. I'll be putting a post up about it later. But again, all you got to do is just leave me a review, send me proof via email, and then um, tell me what readings you want and I will send them to you. Okay. Also, I'm having a, a sale, 50% off. Love letters still on sale. Do you guys know my, my divine counterpart? My, my masculine with that sexy voice he's got that he does love letters. Cause you guys always complain about my, my girl voice, but I'm just throwing out there. Anyways, love letters and all a bunch of other stuff. By the way, the toolkit, the readings and individual stuff is all available too. Okay. 
everything in the toolkit, almost everything is 50% off right now, all right? So just making sure you guys know about all that stuff. Now I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna look at this. I care about you and I'm so confused. Mm, okay, makes sense. Mm, please don't give up. I want you back in my life. One, three, three, that's seven. Oh, <laughs> just in case, just in case you didn't believe what you just saw. And, 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 and remember when I said, I went to the emperor page and I said, mm, it opened to 13, one plus three is four. Then I turned back and it opened to the empress. I didn't want to say it. Cause I'm starting, I'm not supposed to be coaching y'all anymore. I'm just supposed to give you the cards and you just do what you need to do. But I saw that there is a transformation happening within the divine feminine. And that's why we saw that 13 come up. And now, now come on guys, come on. I want you to be the parent of my child. And look at the sun, look at the light. This is what they've been trying to do from the very beginning is get this, this idea of theirs off the ground. And, and again, I believe for some of you, sure, this could be talking, maybe they do really want to have kids with you. But for some of you, you're like, girl, I don't want no kids. Me neither, girl, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Look, what they're saying is, I want you to be the feminine energy that helps me raise up something incredible, bro. Oh, this is amazing. Okay, hold on. Oh, uh, and we've done this before. We will do it again. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. All right. So what's the message here? I just want like ooh, three cards. <laughs> I just want three cards. And again, if you did not believe, I want you back in my life, period. I want you here and now. You know what's funny is I was just about to sing here and now, but then I heard, I remember that someone else said, that they heard that when I said this the other day and then I, so I didn't sing it and now I'm like, you should have sang it. Okay, so. Okay guys, ready? Here's a little channel message from your person after they saw this horrible thing happen and they saw the truth about their situation and they're realizing how much they care about you and how wrong they've been. What is it that you need to know? Reconciliation. It's time to unite and work together now. Come on. It's time to unite. Reconciliation. Oh my gosh. And that, this is the second to last stage of, of the reunion timeline. Okay. Again, if you've taken the assessment, you know what I'm talking about. You, as you move from not even knowing about twin flames or not even knowing you have a person or not even knowing who they are all the way through the timeline, through separation, through all the ghosting and the no contact and the companionship issues and the denial, and then you move into union, this is the second to last stage before blissful union. And blissful union just means we are both actively working on our own individual light work. We are both actively aware that we have a shared mission together and we do everything we do on purpose. So what this says is, I want to get to a point where we're ready to go so that we can go. I want blissful union. I want to be with you. And I, <laughs> seven seven and I promise I'll be back soon and look at the light look at the light it's your light guiding them home this is incredible oh uh, oh uh, okay okay and look 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 in case you need a little extra oomph three fours right there I'm telling you guys I see it I want to be with you I want you back in my life. I will be back soon. Oh, I'm coming home. I want to unite. Please don't give up. Back, back, back. Let me back in. I'm coming back. Let me back in. Please don't give up. Please don't give up. What I have to ask you is why would your counterpart think you would? This is a 911 message. Look at this. 11. This is a 911 message. 
I don't know what I'm doing, but I will do whatever it takes. I'm ready and willing. I want to do the work. I want to work with you. I want to work together. But if I have to do it all alone, I don't really know how, but I'll do it. Anything you need, anything you ask, and anything I can see that I can fill in the gap, I want to be there. Please don't resent me for what I wasn't able to do before. Please don't resent me for not seeing you for who you are. And please don't resent me for not knowing how to be a partner. Let me practice with you. Let me get to be your perfect partner. Let me learn. Help me figure this out. Mm. And there it is. Remember earlier, we saw the two and the seven of swords. And I said, why are we seeing the two? And we realized that that two person represented some karmic liar or lying energy. Underneath it all. Tell me the truth so I can too. So I can too what? What does that mean? So that I can tell you the truth, so that I can be more truthful, so that I can be authentic, so that I can be a good person, so that I can stop pretending that everything is okay when it's not. Oh, this is incredibly beautiful, you guys. Incredible. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. I hope this was a blessing. I hope that as you consider your divine masculine's quest for authenticity, right? To be their, their best self, that you recognize that all along the way, divine put certain things in place to help them become who they were meant to be for you. I hope you see it. I, I'm just blown away even down to the four, four, fours, even the three, four, the two, seven, and the two, seven. I mean, everything is just pointing us and telling us the divine masculine. Yes, they, they did some things and they definitely had to deal with the negativity that came from that. There were consequences, you know, there was karma, whatever you want to call it. But now, now all they want to do is make things right. They care. Ugh. I really hope whoever needed to hear this gets to hear it. You know what I mean? Oh, and look at that. We've got 340 people here. Seven. <laughs> at 12.11. What up? It's 11.11 somewhere, right? And we have over 350 people who have liked this video. You guys are amazing. Seriously. Thank you so much. The reason that I made these was because I knew a lot of people were going to get the ebooks and the audiobooks, not the physical books. Um... So I made these bookmarks so that people from all around the world who are used to watching me here and only like, you know, you can't really like touch anything and be here. You can have something in your hand. You know what I mean? And plus, this is a collector's edition bookmark. I'm not going to make more of these. All of my bookmarks are going to be collector's editions. So if you get this and the book series does pop off, then you have something really, really valuable. So um, if anybody is interested, I am looking for someone to run a book club for me. I don't know why, but I feel like Andrea would be really good for it. Um, but if Andrea is not interested, if anyone is, else is interested, I'd like to start running a book club. I will be making a version of an audiobook. And some of you know that I'm very good with voices. <laughs> and so I will be making um, a like really chill version of an audiobook. It's gonna be more like story time with Grace, okay? And if you're interested, I will most likely have that out in June, okay? So it's not going to be an official audiobook, but it is going to be me reading the story, which again, I was gonna do the voices for my audiobook anyways. It was just, again, gonna be a lot higher quality and in a, in a, whatever, how, probably like you could listen to it on Audible and stuff like that. I'm doing something a little bit different so that I can get it out because it's really important for me that those of you who want to read the story can have the time to do it, even if it has to be just by listening to it, okay? So you don't have to have read the book. If you want to support me as an author, you can go leave me a five star and please make it a five star if you haven't read the book, right? If you don't mind doing that, if you've got an Amazon account and you're like, I don't mind leaving you five, what? That takes like two seconds. Of course I do it. Please search the book on Google and leave me a review on every possible site that you can. I would really, really appreciate if you could do that. Ha ha, here's how it goes. First things first, you take the assessment, okay? And this is especially good for those of you who want to have a more real world understanding of your journey, of your divine counterpart or of yourself uh, without having the tarot involved. 
Now, this is also the point where if you're like, nah, I'm still using tarot for my, my growth and all that. This is also the point where after you take the assessments, you can watch the tarot readings because I actually go through each assessment and all the information, all the spectrums with readings. And it's incredibly powerful what comes through. So you can do one or either, right? Like one or the other or both. Once you have taken the assessments, then you can get your personalized analysis worksheets. How many of you have gotten those? I don't know how many people. Um, so once you get the personalized analysis worksheet, you can stop there because you might be like, I don't actually need to talk on the phone. I don't need any like coach or anything. I just wanted to understand what to do now with the score that I got now. Okay. So that's great for that. If you would like to have some coaching or if you'd like to discuss your analysis or if you'd like to talk a little bit more about your scores, then you can do the follow-up call, okay? And right now, all of these things on my website are set to a higher price because they're all 50% off in the cart. So when you click and add the toolkits or the readings as a package, it's gonna say 4444, but when you go to your cart, they're $22 right now. And that's because I had a client last week ask me to lower the price because she's not gonna be able to get them otherwise, okay? That's going away this week. I'm just letting you know, okay? The personalized assessments are $8 a piece or it's 22 for three, for three worksheets. And I know it might be like, why would I pay? Because I actually have to do the work. I have to analyze your scores. It's not something where I'm just like, you're not buying a worksheet. I'm creating a report card and worksheet based on your scores. So I, it takes me at least an hour to do each one. It's a really, really good deal, okay? Um, and again, with the follow-up call, you book this if you need it, but I really, my hope is that with any of this stuff, that you'll be able to get what you need out of it. My goal in creating the Twin Flame Journey Toolkit was giving you something that, could replace tarot or your friends or your crazy family or whoever you go to that gives you and makes you more anxious. I wanted to create something that you could go to and say, I'm having a tough time with my journey. I'm confused by where things are going. I don't really know what's up with my divine masculine. Let me take this assessment, figure out where I'm at today and use what I'm finding there to figure out what I'm going to do next to help me bring myself back to reality and get some clarity, okay? So if you're interested in that, that is the Reunion Journey Toolkit. It's on my website. It's, I, I, it is the best thing that I can offer because it helps you avoid um, relying on so many different other probabilities and possibilities. No, you're looking at your journey, not a general reading, and it's not even a reading. You're looking at your journey through the facts of what makes a divine masculine or a divine feminine or a, re, a, re, a relationship going into reunion partnership. If that's something that you'd like, they are on big, big sale right now. TheFieryGrace.com. If you want to learn about your divine feminine inner self and see where you are as a feminine, like how far along you are. If you want to learn where your divine masculine is in terms of like what kind of DM they are and what makes a good divine masculine, what behaviors and things that you would expect to see as it changes. The divine masculine identification assessment is great. And the reunion journey um, timeline, the reunion timeline assessment, it is like four tests in one, okay? It is, it, there's so much information you can get out of it. And I really recommend that if you're not going to get all three, that you get the reunion timeline assessment because it, in a way, provides you with the DM and DF assessments. It's again, all three tests are different. All three worksheets that you get are going to be extremely different. Okay. So it looks similar because I, I'm, I have it all set up the same way, but all the information and everything you get out of it is extremely different. So right now, this is my, you know, gift to the mothers and my gift to all of you who are looking at your gas prices, like what the actual F right now, this is my gift to you. I have 50% off all the toolkit stuff and 50% off divine masculine readings, divine feminine readings, love letters, light worker sessions, personalized name analysis and readings and calls with me and Mr. Lightwork together. That, all of this stuff on my website when it's 50% off shows up full priced until it's in the cart. Here's my gift to you. If you leave me a review, for one, two, three of my books, or if you leave me a review for all three books on every site they're sold on, whatever it is, 
for every individual review you give, you can get a free reading from me. Okay. If you are interested in supporting me as an author and the audiobook that I'm putting out, one of the things that you can do is purchase some of the different things that I've created. And right now I have this beautiful Queen of Pentacles abundance coin, and I have this beautiful sunflower. So if you're interested in either of these two necklaces, then they are located. It says like option A or option B, I believe. So this, this is option B and this is option A. And it'll say it, it, it actually describes it. So again, if you guys are interested, oh my gosh, we do have 400 likes. You guys are freaking amazing. Okay, you guys, I gotta get out of here. I love you. Oh, if you made it all the way to the end, like all the way, all the way to the end, I want you to leave a pentacle. I don't know if they've got a gold coin emoji. Um, maybe you can even leave like a moon if that's the only gold circle that you have. But leave something circular, something gold and circular, or maybe even like a bag of coins. Leave something, okay? The, I believe that that single pentacle and the, and the what you get in and, and getting out and all that, that is what's going to help you remember this message because that was kind of the thing that led us all the way through, okay? All right, I love you, I love you, I love you.